When I was a toothless five-year-old kindergartner, I was diagnosed with asthma, which we later found out was a misdiagnosis, and I was actually just allergic to my hamster and all other furry animals, but that's not the point of the story. I spent my first night there, shacked up in a hospital bed, sulking because I was missing out on trying my best friend Lexi's new trampoline. The next day, my mom went out and bought a bunch of books. She sat and read to me the whole week I was there, nearly all day. Nothing fancy. She probably read No David a million times and If You Give a Mouse a Cookie another million, followed by Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. From that point, I don't remember a single day as a kid that I didn't pick up a book. We moved right before I started second grade. I spent most of my time that summer reading. We lived with my grandparents while we were closing on our house. Right across the street from them was the public library. I would spend almost every day there, sitting underneath a big tree made of paper in the children's section, reading about Junie B. Jones and stuff like her peanut butter covered dog. Every other Saturday, my grandpa would give me $20 and take me to Barnes and Nobles. We'd spend hours searching the shelves, only for me to end up choosing one of the first books I looked at when we got there. This continued every other Saturday until I was about 16. I spent a little less time reading once I got friends at my new school, but I still managed to squeeze in some Encyclopedia Brown and Geronimo Stilton in between taking care of my Webkins and Tamagotchi. When I started middle school, my reading interest changed along with just about everything else. I went from sparkly shirts with cats and dogs on them to fishnet gloves and those furry animal hats from Hot Topic. I spent most of my time reading the tragedy section of the chicken soup for the teenage soul, depressing, I know, and reading weird fan fictions about the Jonas Brothers or something like that. My middle school staple read, however, was pretty much the same as everyone else. We're not going to get into that, though. I'm still trying to block that out. In 8th grade, my experience and feelings toward reading totally changed. The first time I picked up To Kill a Mockingbird, I was wondering why are we reading old people books in school, but I was hooked from the first page. I was just reaching the end of my I don't belong anywhere phase and really identified with Scout. While I definitely changed a lot since then and don't necessarily identify as much with her now, back then her love of reading, tomboy attitude, and inability to find her place in the world was something that I felt like I could relate to. It was the first time I felt like I was a part of the story I was reading. I think books have the power to change people's lives, to broaden their knowledge about experience of people other than themselves, to bring them out of rough mental states or allow them to at least escape from whatever is going on in their world and travel to a new one, to develop a connection with characters and figure out about yourself by exploring a character that you see yourself in. That's part of my desire to teach English, to harbor that connection between people and literature. I know not everyone likes reading, but I truly believe that there's a book out there for everyone. You just have to find it.